this is your results when you play with your cat too much. Look at that. And with, when you're playing with a, with a cat like mine, look at that. Look at those scratch marks. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this Monday Night Raw review. This was a pretty wild episode. We started off with Drew McIntyre, he was cutting a promo. And then we saw Retribution. We saw Retribution uh, mess with the production truck. Because a lot of all these glitches and weirdness was happening. So, I don't know who are the rest of the members of this stable, but I'm very sure Santana Garrett is going to be one of them. But apparently I've been hearing Tommaso Ciampa could be one of them. So, yeah, I heard Tommaso Ciampa could be one of them. I kind of doubt it's him because he didn't want to come up to the main roster. But some people are pretty adamant that it's Tommaso Ciampa, which I find pretty weird. So then we had uh, Apollo Crews take on Shelton Benjamin. MVP is accusing Apollo Crews for being a part of Retribution. But Apollo denies it. And Apollo beats Shelton Benjamin, and because of this victory, Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin are not allowed to interfere in his match and Shelton Benjamin also became 24-7 champion we had Angel Garza face Ivar I thought this was pretty unrealistic to see Ivar lose to Angel Garza poor Ivar losing to Angel Garza but you know he, they're competing for the tag team titles so why not I suppose and then Angelo Dawkins was on the screen and he said he had a big surprise for Angel Garza. Now, when he said that he had video evidence, the way Angel Garza was behaving, I honestly thought it was him. What they revealed. What they revealed was who poisoned Montez Ford. And the way Angel Garza was behaving, you know, freaking out and denying that he did it and all this other shit, I honestly thought it was him, the way he was behaving. But no, it turned out to be Zelina Vega, the one person that everybody accused. I'm not going to lie to you, I am very disappointed by this. Now obviously predictability has to make sense sometimes. But I honestly wish it was Angel Garza or Andrade. Like, I, I wanted to see Zelina Vega, you know, kind of pissed at either Angel or Andrade. Because she believed that, or, that, her, that she was innocent. The fact that, that, the fact that they were building an entire storyline around her, you know, being innocent. Bianca Belair attacking her from her own home. The way that they were building the entire thing made it sound like Zelina didn't do it. To me, it felt, felt like WWE were going to go along with this for quite some time. But I guess WWE just decided to say, you know what, forget it. And they revealed Zelina Vega as the one who poisoned Montez Ford. The one person everybody expected and predicted. And we had Natalia face Mickey James. Yeah, welcome back, Mickey James. You didn't get an entrance. And Mickey James loses by count out. Mickey James loses by count out. And as soon as she gets counted out, so I thought that was pretty funny that Mickey James lost by count out, but then she, but. But the, but, the, but the stupid thing is, Mickey James couldn't answer the 10 count, but as soon as the 10 count happened, 
And Mickey would get up to her feet and would just kick Lana right in the face, which I thought was kind of weird. So the next match we had was Oscar and Shayna Baszler facing Sasha Banks and Bailey. Now, I knew from the very beginning when this match was promoted, I instantly knew Sasha Banks and Bailey were losing. Now, I got kind of confused. A lot of people were telling me that Sasha Banks was the legal person in this match. When Shayna Baszler made Bailey tap out, people were telling me Sasha Banks was the legal competitor. So I like so I don't understand. Like if she was legal, why the hell didn't the referee tell Shayna Bailey's not the legal competitor in this match? So I found that very confusing when people were telling me that Sasha Banks was actually legal. So technically, Shayna Baszler should have been tapping out Sasha Banks. From everybody else's logic, if Sasha Banks was supposed to be the legal competitor, then by everybody else's logic, then I guess Sasha Banks should have been the one tapping out to Shayna Baszler. I don't know. People were telling me Sasha Banks was legal. So technically, this win shouldn't count. Technically, this shouldn't really count as a win. This should really be a disqualification. Because if the legal... Cause According to the rules, if the illegal competitor doesn't get out of the ring at the count of 10, at, at the count of 5, they are disqualified. So by that logic, that means Oscar and Shayna should have won by disqualification because Bailey wasn't the legal competitor. People were saying Sasha Banks tagged in. I don't know how true that is. But people were saying Sasha Banks was legal, not Bailey. So I found that very confusing. So I thought that was very confusing. Um, I honestly think... I think Bailey is going to retain at SummerSlam. I think Bailey is going to retain, and I think... I think Bailey is going to retain. Bailey is going to start for, with start first against Oscar, because they kind of... Like, the way they did it is that they said that Oscar is going to face Bailey first, and she's going to face Sasha Banks later. Sasha Banks and Bailey were arg were bickering back and forth to determine who would start, so Bailey would have to start first. So I'm assuming Oscar is gonna lose to the to the to the person she faces first because I honestly don't believe for a second she's gonna win both belts. Now some people could say, oh well, she's gonna beat the person she faces first and then she loses to the the other person later. We don't know how this works. We don't know if Oscar's going to face Sasha and Bailey back to back, or if she's going to face one of them first, and then she's going to face the other one later. Now, if she faces now if she faces Sasha Banks later on in the show, then yeah, I could see Bailey losing. But if it happens back to back, I don't think Bailey's. I don't think Oscar's going to win either way. Some some people may think maybe Oscar loses both of her matches. I don't think she's going to lose both. I think she's going to at least win one. And I'd hate to say it, but I just think she's going to beat Sasha Banks. I think she's going to beat Sasha Banks. I think she's going to take the Raw Women's Championship from Sasha Banks. Shayna Baszler made it clear that she's going that she wants that she's going after the Raw Women's Championship depending on who wins out of Shayna out of Sasha and Oscar. Then we had Peyton Royce face Ruby Riot. Billy Kay uh, backed out. She had a shoulder issue. Now, I think the main reason why Billy Kay didn't want to wrestle because she knew she was going to lose. She knew she was going to lose. That's why she didn't want to wrestle tonight. She's like, nah, I know I'm going to lose because my name's Billy Kay. Peyton Royce got the win. Peyton Royce wins because her name is not Billy Kay. Now, you guys know me. I love Billy Kay. Billy Kay is my favorite member of the Iconics. I see a lot of potential in Billy Kay. So I see I, I see the same thing in Peyton Royce. I think both Billy and Peyton both have bright futures. But the thing that makes me so mad 
is that they treat Billy Kay as she's the weak link. They treat Billy Kay as if she, as if she can't even win a goddamn fight. I'm honestly sick of it. I'm honestly sick of it. Billy Kay deserves better. Billy Kay should be treated exactly like Peyton Royce. So the main reason isn't because of a shoulder issue. The main reason why Billy Kay backed out of this match is because she knew she was losing. Because she knows her name is Billy Kay, she knew she was going to count the lights. So she's like, nah, have bit Peyton Royce wrestle. Have Peyton Royce whistle, wrestle. She'll win. That's the main reason. That's the main reason why Billy Kay didn't want to wrestle, because she knew what was going to happen. Eric had a fight in Raw Underground. I don't even really like Raw Underground. It's just so stupid. Dolph Ziggler graded Eric's performance, gave it a fall, which, which angered Eric. And then we had a fight between Eric and Ziggler. Ziggler would win due to poking Eric's eyes. Ray and Dominic fought back against Seth and Seth and Buddy Murphy in in the street fight. It seems like Ray Mysterio has re-signed with WWE. I'm not very thrilled to hear that, but you know, it made sense because why would Ray go to AEW or any other promotion while while his son is working in WWE? So then we had Riddick Moss. First, some person by the name of Art Artro Ruja, or however you say his name. Apparently he was an NXT superstar, but now he's on the main roster because of Raw Underground. They had a they had a little scuffle there. In Raw Underground. Then we had the Hurt Business face Apollo Crews, Ali, and Ricochet. And the Hurt Business got the win by pretty much squashing Ali and Ricochet in seconds. And Apollo Crews beats both Benjamin and MVP. And while that whole scuffle went on, Cedric Alexander won the 24 7 championship. From Shelton Benjamin. Cedric Alexander would then defend his 24-7 title against Akira Tozawa. Then ultimately loses it back to Shelton Benjamin. Then we had the debuts of Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir. And... God almighty. God help me. God help me. Why, oh, why, oh, why do we have to see these two losers on my television? It's bad enough that we got Shayna Baszler on Monday Night Raw. And now we got to make it. Now we got to make it even worse. That you got to add Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir. Oh, by the way, the one thing I should have mentioned in the Sasha Banks tag team match, Nia Jax came back. I forgot about that. Nia Jax came back. She attacked Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler's the babyface. Shayna Baszler's a babyface, so is Jessamine Duke, and so is Marina Shafir. Why the hell are these three babyfaces? Ronda Rousey failed as a babyface. What makes WWE think that Shayna, Jessamine, and Marina are going to be better in this role? They are terrible. All three of them are terrible. Marina Shafir had a fight in Raw Underground. She beat some redhead girl in five seconds. And Anaya Jax beat the crap out of Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir. She beat the ever-living crap out of them. And then Shayna Baszler would step up to fight her. And, and, and uh, Naya would do the classic heel thing and run away. The classic heel trope. That's not cowardice. That's smart. She already did her damage. There was nothing left for her to do. Montez Ford took on Andrade. Montez Ford would get the victory. Bianca Belair would do the world's strongest slam, or the world's Blairest slam, I guess, on Zelina Vega, because Zelina Vega tried to interfere. I guess that means uh, the Street Profits are losing then, because Andrade and Gaza are 
you know, ended up looking like losers at the end. And then the main event was Randy Orton giving Shawn Michaels an RKO, a punt, and he had a match with Drew McIntyre, and then Drew Mac he didn't have a match with Drew McIntyre, he and Drew McIntyre brawled for a bit, and then Randy dropped Drew McIntyre with the RKO. So that's pretty much your Monday Night Raw. Let me know down below. Let me know down below your thoughts on the show. Hit that thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe. And I will see you all next time.